Sweet corn cultivation involves planting seeds in well-drained soil with adequate sunlight and spacing. As the plants grow, they require regular watering and nutrient-rich soil. Sweet corn is usually ready for harvest 70 to 80 days after planting when kernels are plump and milky. The ears are hand-picked, shucked, and processed by blanching, cutting, and canning to preserve their sweetness. The freshly picked corn can be consumed immediately or processed by blanching and freezing, ensuring the sweet taste and quality are preserved for year-round enjoyment. Keep watching and don't miss the incredible corn canned processing. Corn history shows us that it is not a natural grown plant, but was cultivated and grown by human protection and care in Mexico about 7,000 years ago. However, Accounts say the plant at that time was quite different from the present form. From Mexico, it is renowned in the southwestern United States and Peru. About 1,000 years ago, when some Indians migrated to the eastern woodlands, the present North America, they introduced corn there as well. Corn cultivation is a crucial fact to know that corn crops a summer plant that should start corn cultivation by keeping in mind that it only can nourish in warm areas. An ideal temperature for crop flourishment in the daytime should be around 25 to 33 degrees Celsius, whereas at night, it must be around 17 to 23 degrees Celsius. A corn farm requires a minimum of six to eight hours of sunlight for perfect growing, and it is a very common requirement for this plant. Another part of this notch is to cut off the extra large plants to maintain their sizes. If you don't do so, your small plants won't get enough sunlight, and they might thrive for more. And soon, they may die. But you folks, don't forget to give a thumbs up to the video. Well, corn can be grown at a high temperature of 38 degrees Celsius. However, sufficient moisturized soil can also play the best part. But be clear here, sufficient moisture means not a sufficient quantity of water, but a compatible supply of periodic rainfall, mild, or watering across the whole field and maintaining the temperature of 38 degrees Celsius in the growing season. Before planting corn, at least wait for two to three weeks from the final spring frost date. Take help from Crop Monitoring's historical data on temperature and figure it out from the weather forecast for the next 14 days. In many regions, the best cultivation time is considered late March to early April. Harvesting of corn fields usually takes two to three months from the seedling procedure, though growing time varies among different cultivars. Some types need 58 to 65 days to develop, while some need 86 to 92 days to get fully mature. However, the specific time for each type is generally mentioned on the back of the seed pack. It is very important to choose a variety by keeping in mind all the sources and conditions of your region. October and November are the months to consider the best for corn harvesting. When you find the 23 to 25 percent water content, moisturize in the grain at this standard, the kernels are accurately ready to cut from the cob. When the growing season is complete, don't rush to harvest as early harvesting will cause huge damage to crops in the form of fungal problems or corn ear drops. So picking the right time is very crucial. As the silk appears on the corn, it is also a hint that now after 16 to 20 days, your corn is ready for the harvest. During the harvest period, the ear should be plumpy and brown. The harvesting procedure is done by both hands and machines.
Generally, the combine harvester is used for harvesting the corn. The machine gets its name because it does different tasks at the same time. On the one side, it gets the corn from the plant. On the other hand, it separates the waste of the plant and turns it into crushed form for further procedures. The large-sized cutters cut the cobs and an automated engine throws them into a container that looks like a tractor. Once the corn is all set and clean from waste material, it automatically enters the elevator for a secondary cleaning process. The machine monitors the quality and the variety of the corn and accordingly adjustments are made. It works incredibly as the whole process of harvesting has been done only by one machine. Hey you, the curious eyes, where are you watching us from? Let us know in the comments section. When the harvesting is completed, the next procedure is going to start. What is that? Well, that is processing and turning the corn cob into canned corn. Yes, that's an incredible process in which you can store your corn and enjoy the postseason. Corns are processed after harvesting. They are all brought to the factories. Where they kept them was according to their varieties and sizes. Some are packed in large-sized wooden boxes to bring into the market for common consumers who want corn in its original form to enjoy. But the question is, what is special about processing the corns? There's a mouth-watering answer to this question. So don't skip the next part, but keep your focus and enjoy the further process. In the factories, they do a lot of processes on corn. They process them by wet milling, dry milling, and agitation to drain out the starch, corn oil, and nutrition components. Corn is a versatile crop that is used for various products made from it. In the factories, corn is peeled off through the robotic machines. They are passed through a flatbed conveyor, after which machines begin to rotary scalpers. Finally, here, large-sized scalpers remove undersized and oversized corns again from bulk material. Meanwhile, the waste conveyor throws all waste into grand containers automatically, which is a next-level procedure. There, machines prepare husk from waste while corn beans are ready to be finalized. Canning is an easy process that is completed within a few hours. A few companies completed this procedure only in three to five hours after harvesting. Yes, you heard it right. In the process, both kernels and cobs get separate in their way. Now the kernels fall into a mixture of water that permits them to move forward without damaging the kernels. By passing through the belt, kernels transfer to a conveyor to the next process, which is bleaching in a huge cylinder. They are brought to the canning procedure after a light visual inspection. Thousands of cans of different sizes are there in the filling department. This rotating machine fills 300 to 450 cans in a minute. Later on, salt, water, and sugar are added to increase the taste, and then cans are sealed to secure the nutrition. A whole staff is monitoring the procedure and how they are managing taste, weight, and other factors regarding the canning process. Meanwhile, we can move to the sterilization department. It takes place in huge ovens at 121 degrees Celsius that ensure your product is reliable for 18 to 24 months. Finally, the cans are ready to sell out to the market. Hope you enjoy the whole video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for more updates.